you know, I'm driving to my car and I'm, it's funny how people just say randomly say hi. You know, you're just driving by and they stare for like 10 seconds. And they're like, I'm like, hi, how you doing? Like, I don't know you, but thanks for being nice. People, people are weirdly nice. I don't know what it is, but anyway, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, happy to have you guys back. Sorry, it's been a while. I know I say sorry a lot in terms of, you know, the gaps between my videos, but I'm happy to be back. So anyway, um, this video is gonna be one that's preventative maintenance. What am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, spark plugs and coil packs. Now, do I have an issue with that right now? No, but I'm creeping up on 60,000 miles. I'd rather do preventative. I'd rather get it done, get it out the way, not worry about it for another, you know, 20, 30,000 miles or 15,000 miles. It really depends on the car. As you guys know, I am stage two um, boot mode. It's been great so far. Um, still running into some O2 sensor issues with the cat. I, I don't know, or the downpipe, I don't know what to do. I replaced both O2 sensors. I've got O2 spacers on them. Um, I've, you know, changed the settings in, in the app for boot mode. I, I don't know what to do. Um, I still get this 128901 slow reaction code. Uh, the sensors are in the right place. I, 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 I don't know what to do. So um, if you guys have suggestions, Definitely uh, put some suggestions in the, or uh, uh, I guess a solution in the comment below. I'd love to hear y'all's feedback. But anyway, that's not where we're here. Again, we're here to do, we're here to talk about uh, spark plugs and coil packs. So uh, I'm on my way to uh, my garage to, uh, to get this done, to do this. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. And uh, we're gonna take a look and see what we got. Yeah. All right, so in the garage and I've got baby girl ready to go and get the hood open. She was a little warm, obviously because I drove her here. So I don't want to work on a hot car. Don't want to burn my hands. So waiting for her to cool down a little bit, which she's been cooling down for about 30 minutes right now. Um, but in the meantime, let's take a look and see uh, what parts I got. And uh, let's do that right now. All right, so we've got, uh, Six new coils. Now I didn't. Again, like I said, I didn't have any um, misfires or anything like that. But I don't want to wait till I do that. And the car's got sixty thousand miles on it. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead, and knock this out. Let me get the coils done um, and the spark plug. So I've got six of those. Um, one there. Some more right there. And then we've got uh, spark plug six. NGK Iridium uh, laser, excuse me, laser premium spark plugs. The correct skew for the car. And these are one step colder. Now I did uh, get them gapped. I went to Advanced Auto. I didn't get these from Advanced Auto. Actually, I got the plugs and the coils uh, from FCP Euro and I'll have a link in the description below. But uh, I ordered them in, they came in like a week. FCP's usually pretty good about their shipping times as well as warranties on a lot of their stuff. They got like a lifetime warranty, which is also pretty dope. Um, but anyway, so I had to get these gap. They were at like, I think 0.30 and I had them gap to 0.22. So I went to Vance Auto and got a gapping tool, which is pretty straightforward. In fact, you can just go and you don't even have to buy one and they'll, they'll hand it to you. And I just gapped them in the store. So I went ahead and gapped all of them to 0.022 and got that done. So here are my plugs and my coils. Uh, one other thing that I got too, I ended up getting this um, unique socket. It's a thin wall socket, it's like 14 millimeter, very thin 12 point socket specifically for BMWs. And uh, I think it's because this car has direct injection and if I'm not mistaken, I don't think there's a lot of room on the head. So the spark plugs were pretty snug in there. So I ended up ordering this as well. It's swivel head since the last two plugs that are closest to the firewall 
are pretty tucked under there. So to get to them, it's a tight fit. So you need this right here. And I went in and got that as well. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's check it out and see. Let's move forward and get it. All right, so although this is the N55, um, some of the N55s are different. I know for the F10, 535i, um, the intake kind of goes around the top of the motor. So you'd actually have to remove the intake as well as the um, engine cover. Uh, but for the 335, as you can see, the intake sits right here. So we won't actually have to move this. Uh, but what we will have to move is some of the protective molding um, as well as the plastic covering here, which is above the motor, which is kind of covering the firewall as well. But it also covers the last two spark plugs back there. So we're going to have to take all of that off. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that and get her done. All right, so it's going to be a pretty basic tool set. Um, I mean, a 3 8 drive and a, like a 10 millimeter socket to take off the um, 10, 10 millimeter like plastic uh, bolt clips, I guess, holding that plastic protection shield on. You've got three up there, three over there, um, kind of figuring it out as we go, but, um, and then you've got like these plastic clips that are right here that kind of hold the remaining part of it. And I know you got some strut tower bars. I'm gonna see if I can work around the strut tower bars that are underneath. Um, and like I said, we're gonna remove that rubber mold in there as well. So uh, I've got a flat head in case I need to wedge anything out as well. Um, so let's see how that works. All right, so just so you guys are aware, so I had to remove the two plastic clips. One's right here, um, another one fell, which I'll grab in just a moment. Um, and it gives access to um, two giant bolts holding the top part of the strut bar on. But you've got these other two that are one here and one over there, um, using the 14 millimeter for it. So I'll be removing that. And then for the the two up there, let's see, I think those are, let's see, 17? No. How about 15? No. So it looks like those are probably enough to like a 16 millimeter. Um, or we can end up just simply using a 5 8 to remove those two. So I'm gonna remove those two these two, and then uh, we can start removing coil packs and spark plugs. All right, so as you can see, we've got them, uh, got all the uh, pieces removed, gives us full access to the motor. Um, got two sensors there. Again, like I told you guys, this has been very fun uh, with these trying to figure out my check engine light, but we'll worry about that for another video. Um, but yeah, so we've got that removed and so now we're going to move forward and, uh, start removing the coils. So, uh, to do that, uh, what you do is there are these clips right here and you just, you pull up on them just like that. And when you pull up on them like that, it will automatic, automatically force, uh, the connecting wire loose. And so essentially what you do is pop that out and then you slide out the wire, the connecting wire, just like that. 
Now I have seen some people, what they do is they take like an extension of some sort, like a socket extension of some sort. I've got a few items right here in front of me. Um, you can use something like this wrench here and you simply just pull up. It's a little snug, but you just pull up. Got an extension here, you can get two fingers in. And when you pull up, it'll pop right out. When it pops right out, just be very gentle. And you take it out, just like that. And so, there we go. There's our coil. So I'm gonna replace that with the new one. Take that out. All right, next up, what we're gonna do is using our trusted thin wall socket and swivel head uh, extension, what we're gonna do is simply just put it all the way in, nice and easy. That's what she said. <laughs> Where it's nice and snug and on the spark plug, you'll feel it when you push it in, it'll snug right into place, very similar to how the coil snugs in. And once it's in, you realize you can't turn it with your hands. At that point, take your socket, I'm sorry, your wrench, um, you can add an extension to it, give you a little more leverage. Gently in, and gently just turn until it comes loose. Just like that. Until it gets nice and loose, take your wrench off, scratch it, whatever. And just gently let the loosey. And you'll feel it when it gets real loose. And there we are. So, a little toast, not too bad. It's not too, too bad. But the car does have 60,000 miles on it. And I have had the car since 42,000 miles. And uh, I think it is time to change them. So there we go. So we've got it out. So essentially what we're going to do now is do the exact same process with the other coils and other spark plugs. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, we'll start the process of getting everything back in with the new hardware and get her fired up. All right. So same thing, but in reverse. Just handle with care. Go ahead, put our spark plug in, and very gently just reapply it. What you do is you start tightening it, just making sure it's going to thread accordingly. If it feels like it's not threading, don't force it. It will thread on its own. You don't need any threading fluid or oil or lubricant. I think from what I read, BMW doesn't recommend that. So just thread it nice and easy. Again, if it seems too difficult, you're jamming it in. If you align it correctly, it should just thread on its own. Okay, so now it's tight. I've been turning it for about 10 seconds, just like that. So now that we've got a spark plug in there, um, each one of your um, uh, spark plugs will need to be torqued. And so, bought this a while ago. Um, from what I read, these spark plugs need to be, I think, 23 Newton meters, um, which I think equates to like 17 foot pounds. But I think it was like 16.96, which is roughly 17 foot pounds. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down. Now, uh, side note, um, one of your coils is going to be under the uh, bracket for the O2 sensor plugs. You will simply just remove these very gently, just like that, and kind of move them to the side, just like that, and it'll give you access to it. Now, there is a screw right here. 
can't tell what size it is. Um, it's like a T, T bolt of some sort. Man, look here, you better stop playing. It's actually a T30. So, my apologies. <laughs> so, took me a little while to find one here. We just loosen that up, get that out. Now, before you put the new coil in, you'll notice that there is a notch right here. And this end will notch right in. And that'll tell you that it is snug to get a good seal when putting this in. So you just simply pop it in until you get a good pop right into place. And there we go, the new one's in. So again, make sure to put your plug back in. It will snap into place and then close. I guess this clamp, it will also snap into place and it's nice and snug, just like that. And then repeat for the remainder. All right, everybody. So as you can see, got all of the plugs, all of the coils in nice and snug. Give it an extra push just to make sure everything's in there, clipped in there. And it is, remember, to torque down your spark plugs. And then these are the old ones. Not too, too bad. Again, like I said, I'm not sure how long these were in, previous owner. There was one owner before me. I got the car 42,000 miles. I think these look pretty good, um, all things considered. But again, I've had them in there for, what? What is that, 18,000 miles? So, and it's been, Stage two for the last 5,000, stage one for probably 5,000 miles before that. So again, these might be the originals, I'm not sure. I could call BMW, but I didn't want to risk it. Just went ahead and changed it, got everything changed out. So uh, let's get everything put back together and kind of see how it goes. All right, my good people, that's it. We are all done. She is back together. I did start her. She ran pretty smooth, she fired right up. I'm gonna do a test drive with her here. And uh, yeah, let's take her out on the road and see how she feels. Uh, real quick uh, update. So um, after I did the test drive, I uh, the car was running good, and then I drove it after that, and I started noticing some crazy things. Check engine light came on again, um, outside of the O2 issues that I was having, which I thought I had fixed that, but that came back, even though the car was driving great. But I had noticed uh, rough idle. I went into limp mode, uh, drivetrain malfunction, like all of this started coming up, and um, I. I used the boot mode app and checked uh, diagnostics and it said that uh, cylinder two um, uh, was failing or, or, or pretty much I was getting a, a cylinder two error code. Uh, misfires is what it was, sorry. So uh, I was getting misfires. So the car was running really rough. Couldn't figure out what it was. Um, and that was after like 20 minutes of driving. Anyway, I uh, ended up um, letting the car sit overnight. I reset adaptations. I uh, cleared the codes and uh, now I'm driving her now and smooth as a whip. Man, gas mileage went up. I know she doesn't run as rich. Um, there's less exhaust smell. Um, just, she's purring. It's just smooth, smooth linear power band. Much better than what it was before. And so, you know, moving forward, I, I definitely, definitely recommend if you're gonna go stage two, um, I, I, downpipe, I, immediately I would change coils. Coils and spark plugs, um, I would definitely do that. So just a quick update before the video ends. Appreciate it. All right, so there you have it. Um, all done, all done. Pretty seamless, um, she runs pretty good. Had some fun with her. Um, Again, this channel is just me in my world, just, you know, enthusiastic about cars and 
coming up and learning as I go. So it's my first time doing spark plugs on this motor, or at least on a newer BMW for that matter, actually. But uh, any comments, any suggestions, please, by all means, um, I'm always looking to be better and get better. So feel free to give me any kind of feedback that you can. As always, um, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell icon in case I drop any new videos you wanna know about it. Spread the word. Anybody who's uh, into these motors, into these cars like I am, have them chime in. I'd love for them to check out the video and check out the channel, so. Um, but thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Um, I'm hoping to drop some more pretty soon and, uh, and stay in touch with you guys. So thank you all very much. Hit like if you can and comment. I don't know if I said that already, but I'm saying it again. All right, much love. Appreciate you guys. Peace.